Wheels are one of the first things you notice when checking out a car, and they can have a huge impact on the car's overall attitude. Some are flashy, some are more mundane, uh, but muscle cars have had just about every possible wheel that you can imagine. So today we thought we would take a minute to look at 10 of the more interesting wheels found on different muscle cars that we've featured on Muscle Car of the Week. Coming in at number 10 on our list are the Atlas Aluminum Mags, uh, found on a 1969 Yanko Camaro that we featured. Uh, first of all, the term aluminum mag doesn't really make sense. Mag meant magnesium wheels, uh, but magnesium wheels had a style that was more adopted by aluminum wheels, so today aluminum wheels are often called mags. But the Atlas ones are pretty interesting because they're basically a knockoff design from the American racing uh, torque thrust wheel. And the story goes that Don Yanko from Yanko Chevrolet had a customer who worked at the Atlas foundry. And Atlas wasn't really a wheel company, they made aluminum stuff. But he convinced the guy that worked at Atlas to maybe make some parts for him. So the reason behind this was because Yanko didn't want to invest dollars into the cars, he wanted to keep the profit margin high, and he thought that if he could have Atlas make some wheels for him, he wouldn't have to spend the money to buy the Americans. So Atlas did make some sets of wheels. Uh, again, it's basically a torque thrust knockoff, and the neat thing about them is they don't have the brand name Atlas cast into them or a part number or anything because they were only made in limited sets for Yanko cars. And in fact, there was no retail program, so you couldn't go to a speed shop and buy a set of Atlas wheels. They either came on your Yanko car, sold through Don Yanko, or that was it. So if somebody tells you today that they've got a set of original Atlas aluminum wheels in a box, they don't, because the boxes don't exist. Uh, and it's also easy to fake these wheels because, again, they don't have part numbers or anything else on the back side. But it makes for a very interesting story. It's a great looking wheel and part of the Yanko mystique. Coming in at number nine is another aluminum wheel with an interesting story. Uh, these are found on the 1967 Shelby GT350 that we featured on a recent episode of Muscle Car of the Week. Uh, there are several variations of this 10-spoke Shelby aluminum wheel. The way to tell them apart uh, is that if the Shelby car was bought brand new and had these wheels installed on them, the valve stem would be poking up through the polished part of the step lip. However, if you went to your local Shelby dealer and bought a set of these wheels over the counter and then put them on the car later, those actually had a slightly different design. The wheels on this car are what we call the over-the-counter version. Uh, you'll notice the valve stem is more in line with the spoke than out in the middle of the uh, aluminum stepped lip. These wheels are 15 by 7 inch and they're definitely a signature item on a lot of the Shelby GT350s and 500s and they come in at number 9 on our list of top 10 wheels. Number eight on our list is another 15 by seven inch wheel, but this time it's a steel wheel and it was found on the 1969 Hearst Oldsmobile. Uh, this is a pretty unique wheel. It's got the same basic design as a regular Oldsmobile super stock two wheel, except the outside edge is chrome and the center is painted kind of a dark argent gray. And they have snap in chrome trim pieces that go on the windows of that wheel. Now sometimes you'll see a Hearst Olds car with the white and gold color combination and the center of the wheel will also be gold. Well, according to our research, that's not the way these things came from Hearst. These all came with the gray center. And one of the rationale behind not painting the center gold is that that gold paint was pretty expensive and a whole other process to add gold paint to the wheels. So they reserved that for the stripes on the Hearst Olds. You can find this car in episode number 69 of Muscle Car of the Week. Number seven on our top 10 list comes from episode number 71, and it is a Hearst again, but this time it's a Rambler Scrambler. Uh, keeping up with that theme of a painted wheel, 
our Rambler Scrambler is wearing a set of Magnum 500 wheels. And the Magnum 500 was a very popular muscle car wheel. These were actually manufactured by the Motor Wheel Corporation out of Lansing, Michigan. And these were a very popular wheel. I believe all the major car manufacturers sold Magnum 500s on a new muscle car at some point or another. But the thing that makes these interesting on the Rambler Scrambler is that the centers were painted blue and they had a uh, snap-on polished trim ring that went around the outside. So it was unusual to see a painted center that was not gray or black. Uh, in this case, the bright blue really makes these wheels stand out. These are also some of the smaller wheels we're looking at today in a 14 by 6 inch size. <laughs> Our number six wheel is kind of the ominous looking all black stamped steel wheel found on the 69 and a half Plymouth Roadrunner A12 car. These are a 15 by six inch stamped steel wheel and they were made in Canada. And the way you can identify these is that they had no ornamentation on them. There's no center cap, there's no trim ring. You've got your wheel and your lug nuts. And they've got three interesting little kind of nubs that are pressed into that center design and a letter H stamped inside the bolt circle. If it doesn't have that H, it's not a real A12 wheel. And another telltale between an original and a reproduction wheel is if you look at the direction of those three little nibs, the one nib is supposed to point towards the valve stem. Some of the reproductions have that clocked about 90 degrees out. You can see more of this car in episode number 152. The number five wheel on our informal top 10 is uh, an interesting one. This one caused a lot of controversy. This is a Kelsey Hayes aftermarket wheel called the Stripper. And it was found on uh, the 1970 Camaro that was built by Dick Harrell with the 454 in it. Just a heck of a strong car. And Dick Harrell wanted to have kind of an interesting looking wheel. So he chose this Kelsey Hayes Stripper design, which is a 20 spoke wheel. And the spokes kind of cross on two different planes. And these were available in a natural aluminum or in a, uh, a black matte finish. And in this case, the Harrell team sprayed the inside center of these wheels in a gold color to offset the green on the Camaro. Uh, there's been a lot of different feedback on these. Some people love them because it's kind of a neat old vintage looking wheel. Other people thought, boy, that is really ugly. So uh, we'll leave that up to you, but it's one of the interesting parts of this car and definitely an interesting wheel made by Kelsey Hayes. You can get a better look at that car and it's insane burnout in episode number 70 of Muscle Car of the Week. In the number four position, we actually have a twofer, uh, two different wheels on a similar car. The first one illustrates that muscle car wheels were not always lightweight or aggressive looking. Uh, this 1970 Buick GS 455 Stage 1 car actually came from the factory with wire hubcaps. Uh, these were clipped onto a 14 by 6 inch stamped steel wheel, and this is what the GS came with. Now, of course, the other part of the twofer is that most Buick GS's came with the 15 by 7 inch chrome wheel, which was known as the road wheel in Buick circles. And to me, the Buick road wheel is one of the best looking original muscle car wheels you could get. It's got a real deep dish chrome appearance with the blacked out windows inside and a nice little center cap. The blue wire wheel car can be found in episode number 76 and the yellow GSX with the road wheels is shown in episode number 45. And in our number three slot, we have another twofer, uh, this time the exact same car with two different wheels, a 1969 Pontiac Trans Am. Uh, first, we're showing it with the very famous, very popular, very good looking Pontiac Rally 2 wheel. And these are 14 by six inch wheels, uh, stamped steel. They are painted black with uh, silver highlights on the spokes uh, and a trim ring again that snaps on and a nice little center cap. These wheels are very popular. They made them for many, many years in different sizes and, and bolt patterns and put them on a lot of different Pontiacs. The flip side of the twofer on this one is that this car was also available with a black stamped steel wheel and a very small hubcap that snapped onto the center. 
and the hubcap was pretty interesting looking. It had some very uh, ornate, detailed little ribs stamped into it and a couple of rings of black and then Pontiac Motor Division words stamped into the center. I think they both look cool. Which one would you have chosen? You can see these two Trans Ams in episodes 106 and 141. In our number two slot, we've got one of my favorite all-time muscle car wheels. These are the 15-inch Mopar rally wheels found on the AAR Cuda. These are pretty cool because they've got an argent silver face. It's a stamped steel wheel, again with a trim ring. Uh, they have a 10-hole design, so there's 10 holes stamped into the wheel. And the holes were there to kind of make them lighter and to give some style. But there's a neat little illusion when you look at these head on. Those holes are not true circles, they're kind of D-shaped. The reflection of those holes in the trim ring make them look like circles and they make the whole wheel look a little bit bigger. Uh, the other neat thing about these cars is this was the first time the tire sizes were staggered. So the front size is a little bit shorter than the rear, enhancing the raked look of the AAR Cuda. This beautiful blue one can be found in episode number 78. And finally, our number one wheel in our informal top 10 is from a 1969 Dodge Charger with a 426 Hemi. This car is all black and it has a black stamp steel wheel with a dog dish cap, also known as the poverty cap. This is about as menacing as you can be. And a lot of people say, hey, a car like that, that has such style, why doesn't it have a flashier chrome wheel on it. Well, there's several sides of that story. And many people would buy these cars knowing that on day two, they would go trade these in for a set of flashier wheels, maybe an American racing wheel or a Krager or something else like that. So many people didn't want to spend that extra cash on factory chrome wheels, and they would buy them with the dog dish caps and then take the car home, throw those away and get something nicer. In my opinion, the stamp steel wheel with the dog dish snap-on center cap uh, really makes this car stand out. And there's some neat details on that cap. There's, uh, again, some turbine-like little stamped ribs around the perimeter, a bright red accent ring going around the Dodge Fratzog logo, the three-pointed star found in the middle of the cap. So I think it's cool all the way around. So that's our quick look at the top 10 muscle car wheels from recent episodes of Muscle Car of the Week. Of course, we've got several hundred cars to choose from when picking wheels. Maybe we'll do this again. What do you think? Any particular wheel in this episode that you really like? Share your comments with us. And of course, we welcome you to subscribe to the channel and share this with your friends. And we'll see you next time on Muscle Car of the Week.